All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to do a, basically a comparison between the two probably most talked about gimbals right now, which is the uh, DJI Ronin S and the Moza Air 2. I did sort of a comparison before. It was very quick. Today, kind of spent a little bit more time. And also, I had a chance to familiarize myself, I guess, more with both gimbals. So I think it's a bit more of a fair comparison. Plus, I brought Ketak here with me. And the reason is because... It's not, I, I don't think it really just comes down to just the gimbal itself and design. A lot of, you know, whether the shots look good or not, it really depends on the operator, right? Uh, so it, it really, you know, again, you got to be like with, like with any camera or anything, any piece of equipment, you got to have time to kind of practice with it, use it, and then, you know, get better at using it. So Ketak actually owns the Ronin S. I've had it before, like when it first came out, I got it for about a month and I used it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I ended up returning it because I ended up using, you know, and keeping the, the Moza Air 2. But yeah, so I've had more experience with the Moza Air. You've had more experience with the Ronin, yes. right? Yes. So the tests that we did are just basically outside on the street and we basically repeated each test with each gimbal and also each of us operating it. Because again, like I said, I'm more comfortable using the Moza Air 2 and you're, you know, comfortable with, with Ron yeah. and S. Uh, and let's just, yeah, take a look at some of the, the sample shots. So the first shot is uh, just a simple shot walking backwards. Uh, by the way, for both of the gimbals, we use the same camera, Sony A6500, with the same Sigma 30mm uh, f1.4 lens, uh, so that, you know, it's kind of a fair comparison. Um, the first one here is, like I said, the, the Mosva Air. And it's uh, operated by me. So let's just take a look at the shot here. So wh what do you think? Like the, you know, it looks smooth, it looks, right? I like it. It looks pretty smooth. And this one was in full follow mode. At least that's how I prefer to operate the the, the, you know, the gimbal. Uh, I just said it, and that's one thing I like about the Moza Air is you can very quickly just by rotating the dial like, you know, adjust the sensitivity. Because in, when I'm doing this kind of a shot where I'm just walking backwards, uh, I don't really want it, the gimbal to right away respond to my to every hand movement. So this way, even if I make a little mistake, it's more or less stays on point. But if I want to adjust the framing and move it left and right, I know I just have to move it a bit more and, and then it will respond. And, and, you know, and if I'm doing something where I need the camera or the gimbal to be responding really fast, then I can quickly rotate the dial and that's, I think, a very cool feature on the Moza Air. So this is now done on the DJI Ronin S, and it's operated by me. And I was just doing this in uh, the regular follow mode. And, oh, I see some shaking, though. I wonder whether it's just, like, there, like, look at in the corners, you can yeah. see. So this shot now is on the Moza Air 2 and being operated by Ketak. And we're basically just doing this, again, the simple walking backwards. So this is being operated by Ketak, obviously. I'm in the shot walking, and uh, this is on the DJ Ronin S. Yeah, and I'm, you know, good test when you're looking at these shots is always look at the, like the corners of the shot and look at it against like a static background. So, uh, so you can see it there. Now this yeah. shot here, we were walking backwards, and then I would sort of do like a walk around Ketak here. And for, especially when you're walking kind of around behind, you have to really speed up. So almost kind of going into running because then you have to catch up with the person in front of them. And yeah, that was, I was saying before, uh, the moving uh -huh. with the mosaic was based then with the running ass. Now this is walking back and then the camera will be rotating. Uh, and this is done shot by Ketak on the DJI Ronin S. And there it's going around. So yeah, that was kind of a quick whip around, and then yeah. here, what happened? You you can catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I lost you. So that was a wrong take. All right, our false start, and then yeah. here's another take. Oh, you got you really see? close. Yeah. Now, what in this one? Were you in the regular follow mode, or uh, was I this think in sports uh, mode? I'm in a sports mode there. Okay. Now, how come you you chose to operate it in sports mode? To me, when I'm following my subject, I find sports mode to be more responsible as compared to the regular mode. Now you can yeah. you can adjust the the I can responsiveness adjust. in regular follow mode, right? I can, but you but have to do it through the app, yeah, right? Through the app. That's yeah. the thing. Like I was like so like jealous of you when you did it on your Mosai. I was like, okay. Yeah, that's true. Having that, just being able to just rotate the knob and right yeah, there with you the, can. 
with the rolling as I have to go on the app, I have to adjust, which is, I think it's a great feature to have like all those controls to the app, but it having is, it right yeah. on the gimbal. It's, it's I think it's, having it's, both it's, is good. And Moza offers the app, not to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I know it might sound like I'm rooting for the Moza Air to be, yeah. the, but I mean, at the end of the day, I chose Moza Air. So I, I, I guess, I thought it's not a big difference, but I thought for some reason Moza Air was better than the DJI Ronin. That's why I picked it. Yeah. You picked the, the DJI Ronin because yeah. again you thought it was better than the Moza Air. Yeah. But I think it's it's like every gimbal has some good and some bad, right? I think for the DJI they did have the same control module, but they just want to make more money. Oh, okay. Like with the Moza Air, it just built in in the camera for the DJI. Also, oh, you do can have, have it. the same, yeah, but you, you have can to have buy it. it. You have to buy it separate. And now this is on the again DJI Ronin S uh, being operated by me, walking backwards and then doing the rotation. But yeah, I do see a little bit of shaking. Yeah. I wonder what's what's why 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 that happened there because I didn't see it when you were operating it. Yeah, you see, uh, I'm seeing the rotation is like really. Good, yeah, but it's a bit it goes and then goes fa slower goes and like faster. Psh. Yeah, I I know for me, I mean, again, it's probably because I'm more comfortable using the Moza Air, but I found it like a lot easier to get the shot than on the Ronin S, because the Ronin S either would like respond too much or then it wouldn't want to respond <laughs> enough, and it's it probably just comes yeah. down to the settings, right? Yeah. So now again, this is on the Moza Air two, but now uh, Ketag's operating, so he's walking back is good, and then. You are in full follow mode again too, yes. and I see that it's very steady. Like in the corners, you don't see anything. So I like it. I really like the so what, what do you think? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So in this kind yeah. of shot, what do you think? Mosaic is better, or <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just don't want to say it. That's what I it just is. don't want to say it. <laughs> no, for me, I think uh, we can get the same shot on Ronin. It's just about. Adjusting the, the settings. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I I think you can do it. I mean, because I, yeah. I know I've done shots like this when I had the Ron and S, but it's you have to you have to go on the app you and adjust. And that's the I this wish is... they just included that module like you're saying. Just yeah. have it there so you can, because that's a beautiful thing on the Mozo Air is you can see it there. You have to yeah. all the display and you can change the, the settings and and it makes a difference because if you you're on the field you're in the moment. And it's like you got everything, but you just want to adjust something. And let's say you don't have the phone on you, or or your phone is dead. It's kind of a bummer, right? That you True. can't. Yeah. DJI give us a module. Yeah. <laughs> Included for free. <laughs> so this one is going to be Moza Air 2, operated by me, uh, and we're basically just running. You know, I'm running up to, towards Ketak uh, and trying to see how how smooth I can get it while running, uh, and then just kind of suddenly stopping and holding a, a steady shot. <laughs> it's a cool shot, <laughs> Mr. Hollywood. There. <laughs> now I could definitely see, but I, it wasn't so much that the gimbal was moving; it was the the up and down. Uh, yeah. I mean, and it just could just be me again. I'm not that good with running with gimbals. I just I'm just not good. So, looking at it again, and yeah, it's just I don't see the gimbal rotating because the corners are not moving so much. But I can see you moving up and down, and that's yeah. me just basically with the gimbal. My hand was really shaking. So now we're looking at the same shot, but it's being operated again on the Moza Air 2, but operated by Ketak. I mean, I can still see the up and down, but I think you, you did it better. You weren't, <laughs> you weren't moving. <laughs> I like your expression there. Oh uh, yeah, the extra look. <laughs> uh, it wasn't, yeah, you didn't seem to go up and down yeah. as much as I did. I think so. I did another one. So yeah, yeah, let's try that. So again, Moza Air 2 operated by Ketak and, oh, that was much better. So I don't no. see the gimbal necessarily shaking. It's I mean like like the it's, tilting or panning, it's just more the you know the up and down or yeah, thing like was you running, which is yeah. kind of unavoidable unless you have like one of those springs systems or something you know that some people. Oh have. yeah, the four taxes. Yeah, and this is basically running with the DJ Run and S, and it's operated by Ketak. Now oh there it was, I could see I mean it was shaking with the hand, yeah. but also there was the gimbal was shaking left and right. Yeah, so there it seems like I think the Moza Air maybe was a bit better. But I mean, it's still in all of these takes when you're running with these gimbals, you're gonna see the hand going up and down. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going r as fast as you can, that's pretty much what I find. And but maybe the Moza Air is a bit smoother in terms, like it doesn't respond as much. But again, I'll let you guys be the judge. All right now, this is me running with the DJI Ronin S. So let's see. And this was in uh, in full f in the follow mode, but with like the settings you had it were, were kind of down. It wasn't as responsive. But I th I don't know is it me or am I being biased? But I feel like it's sh was the gimbal was shaking more than the Moza Air. Mm -hmm. What do you think? 
I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I can see the gimbal is going like yeah. everywhere. You know what? I, I like. I've seen people do. You know, running with the Ronin S. Yeah. It's just again, it comes down to the settings. But I, I think again, that's where Moza has a not a big difference, but it has a slight advantage because you can quickly right there because you have the dial, you have the, the display, and you can quickly yeah. adjust the settings. And I would do that. So I could still be in follow mode, but I still make made it so it wasn't that responsive, right? I have to say, like, let me take my cell phone out. And yeah. Let's, Jesus. And then you had to connect to the Bluetooth. And oh all yes, stuff. yeah, and it's, it's a hustle. Like, no, it's not like that bad, but but you know, like in this case, because this was like a real shooting scenario where the sun was yeah. going down, and we just didn't have time to sit there and adjust it. So yeah, we just kind of used it how we how we how we like to use it. Okay, now this shot we were trying to basically start with a low angle. So you both of the gimbals, you can press the trigger to and basically lock the you know the, so it becomes just static basically shot, and then. With the trigger engaged, we would basically go up, 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 and then as we were at the face, we just let go of it, right? Yeah. And then then switch into follow mode. So this this kind of tests two things. How do you, how does it go from locked off mode to full follow mode? Because some gimbals I know when they do that, it's like a little glitch. And then uh, the other thing was just seeing how well it is and how easy it is to operate it from low mode going up. Now on the Ronin, we had installed this, you know, from D digital photo. This little accessory, this little extra handle, I think is uh, is very handy, right? It is. So it's, I I know I found it handy, but anyways, let's look at the shot uh, from Moza Air Two, and this is being uh, operated by Ketak. I mean, it, the framing is not all the way there, but uh, yeah. as a shot, I mean, and you would always let, like once you got high up to my face, you would let go of the trigger, right? Yeah. So now again, and this is on the Moza Air Two, and just being operated by me, and yeah, it looks good, it's right? Perfect take. Smooth and everything, so yeah. All right, let's see how it looks on the DJ Ronin. Okay, so this is uh, operated by Ketak. And you're familiar with this gimbal, so obviously, how did you find getting this kind of shot on the Ronin S? Easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so you're more familiar, that's why, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it looked perfectly smooth to me, so. Plus, I had a screen. Oh, and that's another thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because for my gimbal, I didn't mount the monitor. Yeah. And, uh, and it does help when, yeah, when you I'll invert preview. it. Yeah. yeah. And this is operated by me on the DJI Ronin S, and it's basically just walking backwards, you know, s starting at with the feet, and then going up to the face. It looks, I mean, the transition looks good, but I still see afterwards like the shot is shaky. So I don't know whether I was screwing up something. But you see, I see like it feels like the gimbal's going uh, like, I, on I, the no, roll axis. Yeah, I can a bit. see what's happening. Yeah. It seems like uh, on the I roll can, axis. Yeah, right? I can see on the. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what do you think after looking at the shots? What do you think of, the, of both gimbals? It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and I, again, I think that's the you know the reason why I wanted to have Ketak in this video yeah. too. The kind of you can see it's really going to come down to each individual. You can't really say that it's one gimbal's hundred percent better than the other. In this case, I think they're both so close, right? Even yeah. for me, like I feel like they're so close. The build quality, sometimes it's certain things feel better on the Mo DJI Ronin than the Mozwa. But at the same time, I like the display in the back here and the fact that you can change the settings quicker. And I think yeah. you like that too, right? So, I mean, it's, it, you know, I'll tell you. For me, I think I'm still going to stick with the Mozwa Air 2. You're probably going to stick with the I'm DJI Ronin. I'm going to stick with the Ronin, yeah. yeah. I love because, it. Because, yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I think it, it is a great gimbal. It just really comes down to whichever gimbal you go with. Take the time to learn the settings, yeah. go through it, uh, you know, figure out how you like to work with it and practice. And I think that's the biggest problem is whether it's gimbals or cameras or, or like, you know, little stabilizers like glide cam. I know I know with the glide cam back in the day, I've seen so many people buy the glide cam and they were like, oh, it doesn't work. You know, they would just take it out of the box. You have to practice <laughs> with it. Now with gimbals, it's a lot more forgiving because they kind of straight out of the box can give you smooth shots. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing these difficult shots where you're moving fast or getting weird angles, you really got to be able to like have the time first to put your camera on there, balance the camera properly, learn to do that, and then learn to use the gimbal, learn to go through the settings, figure out what settings work for you. Uh, and you can get beautiful shots, I think, with both of these gimbals. It really just comes down to you learning to use the tools. So uh, I think, yeah, at the end of the day, maybe, again, if you really want to be sure, Maybe if you have a chance, either rent both of these gimbals, <laughs> rent both of these, and then and then you can actually see, you know, what kind of fits better for you. But uh, I, I, either way, 
you're not gonna go wrong. I, I don't think with e either one of these gimbals. So, right? Yes, right. I agree. But in the end, you know, get the Mozart too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. See you in the next wow. video.